Every woman is born with fire, the fire that creates, nurtures and sustains life. But somewhere between responsibility and resilience, that fire begins to flicker. Not because she is weak, but because her body is changing. They call it menopause, but here across Asia, it doesn't arrive quietly. It comes early, it burns louder, and it stays longer. In India, the average age of menopause is around 46. In Vietnam, even earlier, one to two years before women in the West. So why does it hit us harder? This isn't just biology, it's memory, it's mindset. It's the body remembering generations of survival and learning to speak when we refuse to listen. Every woman's body carries a blueprint, her DNA, a story written long before she was born. But what we know now is that this story is editable. This is the science of epigenetics. Epigenetics says our genes aren't destiny, they're dialogue. They respond to how we live, what we eat, how we think, even how we love. When we live in chronic stress, when sleep is sacrificed, when our diets lose their vitality, the genes that were meant to protect us turn silent and those that carry vulnerability turn loud. For Southeast Asian women, the result is early menopause, amplified symptoms, hot flashes that feel like anger, insomnia that feels like punishment, and fatigue that no amount of rest seems to fix. Because the body isn't malfunctioning, it's remembering. It's reacting to generations of overwork, suppression and silence. Science now shows that trauma, even that of our grandmothers, can chemically mark our DNA. That emotional repression becomes biological expression. The stress our mothers carried in silence, we carry in symptoms. But here's where the story takes a fascinating turn. Across cultures, menopause is experienced differently, not just because of genetics, but because of perspective. In the West, menopause has long been seen through a pathological lens, a medical event that is supposed to be managed, medicated and mourned. A sign that something has ended. But in Japan, they call it konenki, a word that means renewal of life energy. There, menopause isn't feared, it's honored. Women expect it, prepare for it and flow through it with community support and dignity. Studies show Japanese and Chinese women report fewer hot flashes and less distress, not just because of their soya-rich diets, but because of the cultural mindset. They see it as a transition, not as a disease. Meanwhile, many South Asian women meet it with silence and Western medicine meets it with prescriptions. Both miss the middle ground, the understanding that biology needs empathy as much as treatment. Menopause is not a pathology. It's physiology asking to be understood. Our urban lives have changed faster than our biology can adapt. The food we eat is packaged, the light we see is artificial and the air we breathe is toxic. And the lives we lead are disconnected from nature's rhythm. Every artificial hormone mimic, every paraben, every pesticide, all these act like imposter estrogen. They confuse our bodies, accelerate hormonal chaos and leave us wondering why the storm came early. In Ayurveda, this is called Vat aggravation. Too much movement, too little grounding, too much input, too little silence. And when Vat rises, the mind scatters, the sleep breaks and the spirit tires. So no, it's not just hot flashes, it's a cry for balance. Menopause doesn't just happen to the body, it happens to identity. For decades, a woman's worth has been tied to fertility, youth and beauty. When hormones shift, she begins to feel invisible, not because she has faded, but because society refuses to look deeper. But here's the truth, menopause is not the death of femininity, it's the rebirth of wisdom. 
In Indian philosophy, this is the vanaprastha phase, a stage of withdrawal not from life, but from noise. A return to self, a season for reflection, teaching and legacy. Our ancestors celebrated this transition as sacred. Modern life forgot. Menopause is not a fall from grace. It's grace finally returning home. The science of epigenetics gives us hope because it tells us that every day, every breath, every thought can switch our healing genes back on. Through food that's alive, rest that's real and self-talk that's kind, we can rewrite the story our bodies tell. You're not your mother's menopause. You are her evolution. Feed your body ghee instead of guilt. Feed your mind silence instead of shame. Feed your soul sisterhood instead of solitude. Because this is not the end of your fire. It is its refinement. The flame that once burnt for others now burns for purpose. Across Asia, a new story is being written. A story where women speak of menopause without whispering. Where healthcare listens without judgment. And where the world finally sees menopause, not as a breakdown, but as a becoming. Menopause is not the loss of youth. It's a rise of awareness. It's not the end of your rhythm. It's your body composing a new one. So to every woman who feels unseen, you are the keeper of an ancient strength. To every society that still dismisses it, you're ignoring the world's most powerful force in its prime. Because when women embrace this fire, they don't burn out. They light the way forward. This is not your end. This is your second spring.